I, I don't know if anything. Oh, golly. Hey, glad you guys are hanging out again. Welcome back to Jokes Automotive. Looks pretty nice, don't it? Huh? Huh? Yeah, it's not done yet, but you know, look. Uh, let's fix that. Yep. There's challenges involved. It's a little different than the door thing. So, not bad. There's uh, engine grime, oil and stuff we gotta get rid of. Clean up our rusties. Protect this, the, the good side. And as you can tell, pretty crusty. The rest of it's pretty good. So I've got an idea that I want to do with this. Uh, it'll be controversial. Yep. Like about everything I do. You know. Other than that, there's no real holes or anything. The interesting thing is these have wood. Yep. That's wood. There's another piece of wood right underneath here. <clears throat> and the screws and the bolts and stuff hold it where uh, it's solid enough. No, we're not touching that. The masking tape here is for the emblem holes when I did the body work and prime in and all that. I didn't want to leak, so we'll have to get that off. We have prop rods to deal with. They don't necessarily come off like you'd think. So let me get these protected from this side, the good side, get them covered up, <clears throat> and we'll uh, see what happens next. I'm not sure. Protected. <clears throat> now, before we're done, we'll sand the edges and make sure masking tape and re, re mask. We're just trying to protect it right now because <clears throat> our expensive primer, we don't want it subjected to chemicals because chemicals are going to be involved in this process. Yep. Baked on dirty grease, you know, and I and I I pondered with the idea of just let's go ahead and wipe it all down with lacquer thinner, and it's probably going to happen. But this is going to get the bulk of it. <clears throat> Do that in a well ventilated area. I'm in a barn, and it's, you know it's ventilated. We're going to put this on here. And then uh, probably go in the house for a little bit, let her eat. It's been a few minutes. And what I wanted to do was get underneath, kind of spread that stuff. An old throwaway brush. Man, buy, go, go buy a bag of these. It's like $8. A big old bag of them, and they last forever. And you get done with them, you throw them away. They got the bigger ones, too. Good little tip for you. It, like at the, you know, the Menards or the Lowe's or whatever's in your neighborhood, right? <clears throat> but this stuff, that grease is just thick. So we're gonna let this eat. I'm gonna agitate it and rub on it. You know, hopefully I'm thinking I can just take a bunch of paper towels and wipe this stuff out of there and then go at it with some uh, lacquer thinner. It's really clean. It just stuff is just, ugh. Man. Look. Yep. It's grease and grime. Got to have it off there. This stuff's working. See it bubbling? That oven cleaner's some good, pretty good stuff. <clears throat> Hopefully it removes paint better than I've seen before. Well, just there a little bit. We're going to get the rust mort out. There's the bottle. If you want to look it up and get you some that bottle's a hundred dollars it's worth it i got a little tub of it here and what i want to do 
on our, you know, these little springy things that you can't take apart, they're going to get painted. So I want to do our best to, to you know, and once we get it painted, we'll lube it up good. They should last a long time. Things like this, this doesn't come, come off, doesn't come apart. So I need to soak inside the little pivots and all that stuff and just get a little, get a little, let's get a little rust morty in there. Kind of soak, soak it a little bit. We'll keep it wet for a little bit. And when we clean up this mess, we'll clean that up with a little bit of lacquer thinner. It'll remove anything that's, that's there. You know, we got one over here, right there. We have some places here, you know, some, so we want to treat it a little bit. That's it. Let's see what this did or didn't do. Yeah. Yep. This is going to take a while. Lacquer thinner. Cheap stuff. Lacquer thinner is lacquer thinner. The way this hood's shaped, it all should stay in the middle. I don't want to get it on my primer that's overpriced. So I'm going to let this stuff soak. Roll around, get up underneath all that stuff. And I'll wipe it out. Oop. Do it all over again. Well, got me a, a clean brush. Well, it was clean when I started getting up underneath all the edges and this this lacquer thinner is taking this paint right off like it's nothing you want to do this in a well ventilated area you don't want to have any kind of flame this is highly flammable kind of stuff I'm just rolling it around flushing out everything I can flush out all that old paint grease dirt and grime getting everything I can get. Then I'll wipe this out clean. And I'll throw some more in here. It's sort of like a very shallow bathtub. Dang it. There's some loose material in here, stuff that, you know, once that lacquer thinner dries up, it's gonna come out. <clears throat> we got a lot of sanding and prepping to do. There's some uh, corrosion. Yeah, well, turns out aluminum doesn't rust. Aluminum doesn't rust. But you know what it does is corrode. See this? These light colored? That's corrosion. Corrosion, these little dark spots, it's corrosion. You don't have to call it rust if you don't want to, but it's the same dang thing. It's called oxidation. That metal is oxi oxidizing. Just like this metal. This metal, this metal. Oxidizing. They just look different when they do the same thing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, change my mind. It's risky. Might run out of time. We've got to have paint on these tonight. It's Saturday, it's 4.30, 5 o'clock-ish. You know, I'm gonna see if I can't take some of these little knickknacks off and go ahead and since it's such a beautiful day outside, no sense in wasting it in this barn, go ahead and go out there and do some sandblasting. Yep. Let's see how it goes. Might be nothing left. Well, <clears throat> prop rods are all off. I get them cleaned up pretty good. No major wear or anything. I've got all the little washers and springs and 
a little lever and the secondary latch lever. It's all in some rust mort in a tub soaking. So uh, we'll paint those at some other point. But this it'll make it for a nicer job. You know, we'll be able to get inside here and some of that stuff like the little tab, the little tabs that hold the prop rods. Yeah, those, those little Phillips screws probably aren't going to come out. So I ain't messing with it. We're going to sandblast it and paint it. Trunk lid over here. Same thing here. All right. I'm going to leave it. Let's paint it. And then we'll fix some whatever metal we end up fixing for what's left, I guess. I hope. Well, that went swimmingly until I ran out of media. So we'll just finish this the old fashioned way. Uh, I pulled the wood. There's wood underneath this, uh, you know. Pulled it out because when I used that lacquer thinner to clean all this, the little horsehair fabric cushiony thing that absorbed it and it's just falling apart nasty anyway so I thought well I'll slip that out and clean that up so I'll clean up the wood probably at some point down the road uh, clean it up soak it down really good with uh, you know some kind of rust oleum or something just to seal it then I'll use that sticky back foam on the inside of it up against the hood to take the place of that nasty thing then I'll screw it back in place when we go to put the hood on the car which will be a while yep let me get some, I gotta get this cleaned up. I need to get, I'm, yeah, you guessed it, 415. I know the internet's not happy with the 415, but that's what I'm doing. That's how I'm gonna do it. I'm 415, all the steel. I'm not worried about this. I've got a, another method for that, this, this go around, but I've gotta clean that up, get that sanded down, you know. And I want that 415 to, set up for a good hour and a half or so before I go putting any kind of top coat on it so it doesn't blend and bleed through like it did on the doors a little bit. If it does, bah. we can paint the whole car that way. Be marbled green, racing, English, whatever. A piece of, a couple pieces of 180 folded over. Got some of the roughness off of things. The, uh, the rust on the aluminum, that's what these that's what that is they don't call it rust they call it corrosion it's the same thing if you went to you know i had somebody say something on a on a post i had said aluminum doesn't rust nope it corrodes it's the same thing poor 15 works on it too same thing now I've got a coarse scotch Bright pad getting underneath these braces best I can. I did slide the sandpaper underneath just to loosen up any kind of particles and gunk, you know. I was trying to get her polished up really good and break down some of that aluminum rust. Yes, I know, it's corrosion. I'll repeat my process on the trunk. And then we'll get to the 415. All right, so on the trunk lid, get the cheesy, could be factory paint. It might just be uh, some kind of spray bomb that somebody's done on it. I, I, I don't know. I'm not an MGA expert, um, but I have that Scotch Bright pad and a little bit of lacquer thinner. So we're just gonna soak it, give her a scrub. Try not to get this stuff where I don't want it. No doubt, use a uh, area that's well ventilated. Should probably use gloves. With the years and years of the, the grease and chemicals, I don't know that.
it's ever bothered me much. Some people are probably more sensitive than than me. Now let's get us a paper towel. The lacquer thinner dries really quick, so I just have to go over, but it comes right off. Lacquer thinner do that to any kind of paint, really. <laughs> Like I said, the doors, it didn't matter so much. These will be pretty, pretty nice, I think. Hey, just my opinion. We will wipe this down. Wax and grease remover, or maybe even some urethane reducer just to kill that kill that old uh, lacquer thinner any kind of residue we don't want it on there it'll make our paint do some crazy things now here I got holes for the emblems that go on the other side and they're they're primered over and all that, so I'm going to have to work my way around those. Uh, probably not do this. I don't want it to creep through and underneath my primer cause me a problem later. Takes it right off. All right. Everything's cleaned up. Wiped her down real good with uh, wax and grease remover. Getting ready to get the poor 15s out. But before I do that, I want to show you guys something. Remember last week, I did the doors, right? Uh, that's a poor 15. See that? It actually etched itself into that plastic and it shrank. This poor 15 does shrink up. <laughs> and shrunk it, shrunk it down. And that, I mean, that stuff's harder than hammered heck right there. Right? So, what do you think it's going to do to this? Especially when it's prepped up and clean, it's not going to come off. All right, I'll turn you back on and see how mad I can make the internet. Well, all the edges, poor 15, really, really thin. You know, really use a lot of thinner just to, I want it to wick into stuff, right? Up underneath these edges, inside that lip best we can. And it's already starting to set up. So, got screws in my bolt holes. Just random ones, keep too much stuff from getting in there. And uh, tell you what, changed my mind. I'm poor 15 these whole things. Yep. I didn't put the color right on top, just like I did the doors. You know, I mean, the internet would be mad at me, but hey, I gotta be myself. All right, we're gonna do enough fancy painting on the car, so I, I think these are gonna turn out nice. Find out what 15 is in the cup. Like I was telling you about the trick, a little hole in the tape. 
It's been working out so far. We're not hardened enough on the inside. Uh, get this up out of the way because we probably already got more than we need. I'm going to mix this two to one so I have the paint on the one mark, actually on the two mark, then I'm going to right there and probably go a little extra because I want this stuff thin, sprayed on as dry as I can. Well, thin as I can so I'm not up till four o'clock in the morning waiting for it to dry that's kind of what what I learned from doing the doors was it was too thick didn't give it enough time to uh, set up and that's where it kind of mixed which mixing's good. That means it's not going to peel from each other. And those doors look great. Once they, once they, everything hardened up, I mean, it, you know. out pretty slick I think you know it's a couple little nibs a couple little there's a fish eye or two which I'm not surprised because all the grease and everything that was in there you know I mean you guys tell me what you think you know I'm just a guy in the barn <laughs> no expert at anything nine times out of ten I'm probably like a lot of you guys just watch them to figure out how to do something, you know? And that's why we do this together, is to figure it out. The poor 15 thing, I know. Man, that's controversial. We proved that in the last video. But, if I like it, and it serves my purpose for my situation, and the car I'm working on, and the guy who owns the car, then that's what I need to do. But you guys need to figure out that kind of thing for yourself, you know. So take take what I do with a grain of salt. Do like I do. And I, I've watched tons of videos, watched a lot of people do different stuff, and I come up with my own way of doing how I need to do it for what I need to do, you know. So, there you go. It worked out. I, I mean, it's, it's not half bad really so you know I, but but i appreciate you guys watching and it, it, make sure you're subscribed you got questions you want to call me an idiot i'm good with that all right but you can't really call somebody an idiot unless you're standing in their shoes this car was going to be a rat rod now it's not it's going to be a nice car right anyhow I'm glad you guys spent spent the time with me and thanks for hanging out. I can't say how much, I just can't say enough how much I appreciate you guys. Huh? We'll see you next week. Have a good week. We'll see you next Sunday. Junk out. Man, these fumes are a little bit, oh, it's time to go in. Mm-hmm.